Celebrate the 4th of July in the middle of February and call it New Year's. Wait till they start shooting firecrackers on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> firecrackers on St. Patrick's Day? Good evening, Mr. Baturin. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. Ah, oh, my friend Bubbly, how are you? Good evening, Mr. Baturin. Glad to see you. How's the law business? It's all right. How are my friends, the Lings? I bet Dr. Ling is proud of his daughter. I hear everyone thinks she's one of the finest surgeons at the Bayview Hospital. Oh, yes, by the way, uh, I hope you're all coming to our benefit tonight. We expect to be there. That's good. But something else concerns me at the moment. I didn't get very far with your manager. Oh, <laughs> well, you know the professor. He thinks only of his books. You know, I'm Dr. Ling's attorney. Oh, yes, of course. Dr. Ling is a fine man. He is, but he doesn't happen to want to join this Merchants Protective Association of yours. Oh, mine? I wouldn't expect you to admit that you're the head of it. But since these merchants here in Chinatown are being forced to join... Forced to join? I assure you I didn't know. I am quite sure the King of Chinatown knows everything that goes on in this district. <laughs> come, come now, Mr. Lee. Well, uh, perhaps I do have a little influence uh, in this community. And you can rest assured that I shall use it in behalf of our very good mutual friend, Dr. Chang Ling. Yes, perhaps I'll drop around to see him after the benefit. Then you'll put a stop to this racket they're starting and not force these... Oh, Mr. Lee, have I ever forced anyone? No, that's not the way you work. Good night. Mr. Baturin. Hello, Frank. How are you? <laughs> Someday, Professor, you're going to get that long nose of yours caught between the covers of one of those books. Somebody has to keep the book straight, don't they? Somebody? <laughs> very commendable. Very, very smart. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, we're going to have trouble with that herb doctor, Chang Ling. He's squawking about joining the association. Yes. I saw his lawyer a little while ago. I told him I'd use my influence to see that the worthy doctor has no further cause for squawking. I made up around tonight to see him myself. That Chang Ling's pretty important in Chinatown. If he doesn't join, it's going to be difficult to get the rest of them. All the more reason for handling him with kid gloves. Yes, well, you've been doing that for some time. 
We'll try another makeup glove. Now look here, Professor. When are you going to learn how to deal with these people? You've been listening to Mike Gordon again. Mike's got ideas. Wrong ones. You know, Mike has stepped out of line several times lately. Maybe he's getting too big for us. As my friend Dr. Changling would say, one foot cannot stand in two boats. Well, if Mike won't ride in our boat... Say, did you place that bet for me? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, 20,000 on Grady. And uh, here are your tickets. Ought to be a good fight. Rather funny, isn't it, feeling as you do about Mike and uh, betting on his fighter? You think so? <laughs> Mike's no good, but he's smart. He's got a very good fighter. When it comes to betting, I put my money on the best man, whoever's handling him. Well, I don't know anything about that, but uh, Mike thinks this gravy has gone into the big time. Oh, yes, uh, the, uh, they're asking for another contribution for the Red Cross in China again. Why didn't you give this benefit for the Red Cross? <laughs> I'm surprised at you, Professor. You're a very wise man, but you cannot think alone. No. You need me to tell you how to think. Now, why should I put a lot of money where it won't show? What I spend here, everybody sees. Like that poster always saying, Frank Baturin, huge benefit fight. Proceeds to go to the playgrounds of Chinatown. You know, I'm really a very nice fellow to do this. Liang Wei Yetka. Tom Neho Fanlu. Okay. Good evening, Doctor. Well, I saw Baturin. He may drop in to see you after the benefit. Says he'll use his influence to see that no pressure is brought to bear on our mutual good friend, Dr. Chang Ling. Frank Baturin is an evil influence. It is sad that poison so often comes wrapped in such an agreeable package. He has a likable personality, all right. That's his stock in trade. Makes it easier to rob with one hand and make big gestures with the other. Like this benefit fight tonight. And everybody falls for it. But they do not realize that sometimes the hand that helps you is also the one that cuts your throat. And let us think of more pleasant things. Supper is nearly ready. Let me be merry now to tell us she's on the way. You answer it. Hello? Hello, Bob. This is Rep Harrigan. Mary's on an emergency. Yeah, Dolly, too, but they ought to be through any minute now. I'll say we'll be there within a half an hour. So long. What are you doing here? Oh, just some special research. Oh, you expect me to believe that? Well, I'd certainly appreciate it if you would. Well, you'd better not let Dr. Jones catch an ambulance driver hanging around here waiting for one of his nurses. Dr. Jones? Uh, good evening, Dr. Jones. Um, nice night, uh, isn't it? Yes, sir. George, as soon as Dr. Ling gets through with her operation, have her come into my office. Yes, Doctor. Gee, I'm sure glad that's over, Dr. Ling. I don't know how you do it. Here I am shaking like a jitterbug, and your hands aren't even trembling. The first thing you've got to learn is not to let your hands tremble. If you want to be a good surgeon. No, thank you. I don't want to be a surgeon. You know what's wrong with me? I've been seeing too much of that pig-headed Rep Harrigan lately. And he's enough to give any girl the shakes. And how you'd yell if anybody tried to stop you from seeing him. Come on, Dolly, hurry up. I promised Dad we wouldn't be late. Hello, Rep. Hello, Mary. How many times have I told you to stay off this floor? Well, since when did you start running this hospital? Look, you two, will you do me a favor? Sure. Of course. Will you postpone tonight's battle just for tonight? I know, but it's she's always fault. trying to He's tell me the what one to do. She's the one. Dr. Jones would like to see you in his office right away, Dr. Ling. Tell him I'll be in as soon as I wash up. Wait for me, I won't be long. Okay. Dr. Jones. <laughs> you know, Dolly, she's right. We do fight too much. I gotta get dressed. Now, look, Dolly, we've known each other a long time, and I... Well, I, I like you better than any girl I know. So? Well, if I didn't, I... Gee, I... I don't know how to ask you. Oh, that's all right, Rep. I understand. Gosh, I... Uh, I don't know how to say it. Say it the simplest way you know. Can you lend me two bucks till payday?
You sent for me, Dr. Jones? Sit down, Dr. Ling. Thank you. Now, what's this I hear about your leaving us? You don't know how sorry I am about it. I've been very happy here. Then why do you leave? I have to. Doctor, you're a born surgeon. You're bound to go far in your profession. One of these days, the first opening, as a matter of fact, I'll put you on as resident surgeon. I'm flattered and very grateful. But I can't wait that long. I need money right away. A lot more than you can afford to pay me. You won't change your mind. Well, when a woman's made up her mind, I know better than to try to make her change it. But think it over. Thank you, Doctor. Come on, stand back. It's all right, folks. Just a joyride. No customers. Good evening, Dr. Ling. Hello, Dr. Ling. Dinner ready? Good evening. Hello, Dad. Happy New Year. My child, when you desired to become a modern, up-to-date doctor, I sent you to college. You've been a darling. I even countenanced your working in a hospital. Perhaps if some of my herbs had proven unsuccessful, I might even have sent one of my patients to you. But please, do not say, hello, Dad. I'm sorry, Father. I'll try to remember. That will be 25 cents. And they will do you exactly as much good as if you had paid uptown prices. You know you're tickled to death I've got my degree. Mm -hmm. You'll probably end up by operating on me. Mm -mm. I like you just the way you are. Come, come, children, you are late. We've been waiting supper for you. Oh, boy, lead me to that chop suey. My son. Tonight, we celebrate the New Year's festival of my native land. We do not eat American food. I do not think many people in China ever heard of your great American dish, chop suey. Rice is our national dish. The only way I like rice is thrown at me. <laughs> Look out. Look out now. <laughs> and now, a happy New Year to our best friend, Dr. Ling. Did all from me and all my folks. And may the New Year bring peace to our people and to the whole world. Well, that's a big order, Mary, but here's to it. Oh, say, that's <laughs> good. Yeah, so better than that. Well, you have to acquire a taste for it. Thank you, my children. You've all made me very happy tonight. Say, if we want to get that fight before it's over, we better get going. Right. Come on, Dad. Father, you're not backing out. You promised to go. I always keep my promise, but a prize fight is a strange way to celebrate our New Year's. Isn't there already fighting enough in the world? Oh, after all, it is a benefit, you mm. know. So yeah. You know, I got two bucks on this fight. I expect to clean up. <laughs> yeah, you know whose two bucks it is, too, don't you? All oh, quiet. <laughs> Thank you. Before the main event, I would like to have the man who has made it possible to use the proceeds from this fight for such a worthy cause say a few words to us. Mr. Bachorin, give him a hand. Go on, boss. Take a bow. My dear friends, it makes me very happy to see such a splendid turnout here tonight. Well, naturally, the bigger the crowd we have, the more money we collect for the playgrounds of Chinatown. I shall not bore you with a speech. I just want to say that uh, it gives me a great pleasure not only to be able to do my bit in behalf of my many friends in this community, but also to champion good, clean sport. So that's the king of Chinatown. I think he's quite nice. So do a lot of other people, unfortunately. The evidence of a single glance cannot be relied upon, my child. I think you're both prejudiced. So prejudiced that if I were a violent man, I'd... But I am not a violent man. Wait here for me. 
Hey, Tatus, what's the rush? Hot Tatus to you. Is the boss inside? No, Mr. Baturin just left for the fights. Is anything wrong? Plenty. Yeah? If I was to tell you what I know about... Say, what are you holding me up for? Can't you see I'm in a rush? To the arena. Snap it up. Close that right, baby. Close it. Close it. He's killing him. Maybe you'll get a patient for that ambulance of yours, you have. Yes, sir. A couple more lefts like that, and I'll be on my way back to the hospital with that Grady on a stretcher. Say, what's the matter with our boy tonight, Mike? He's taking an awful beating. That's fine. But I thought this Chinese kid was a setup. So did somebody else. Hey, the chief wouldn't be betting the wrong way, would he? I made 20,000 wrong. That'll mean trouble. It's about time somebody made trouble for Frank Baturin. And I like trouble. Come boy, Tommy. Who said the Chinese didn't like to fight? We don't, but we can and we have to. <laughs> Grady isn't doing so well tonight. Oh, fight's not over yet. Boss, there's something I gotta tell you. No, no, tell me after the fight. I got this straight. Mike Gordon has crossed you. This boy is great. He's gonna lose the fight. All right. Wait for me outside. champion Tommy Wu. Hello, Frank. Hello, Mike. Too bad, eh? I thought your fighter was a siege to win. Yeah, he fooled both of us. Hello. No, oh, he fooled only one of us. I didn't think the king of Chinatown could be fooled. He can. <laughs> So you finally admit I'm right. I'm glad to hear you say it. You know, I'm going to enjoy reading in tomorrow morning's paper that Mike Gordon was killed in a mystery shooting. Found dead in his car. Well, now, now you don't feel that sore about it, do you? Now, Joe, get Taters, tell him to meet me at the club. You better go over and tell Red how disappointed I will be if that little story isn't in big black headlines in the first edition. Tell him to follow Mike home and do a nice, clean job. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Oh, I read. I'll bet the boss is burned up at Gordon. More than that, he wants you to get Gordon ready for the undertaker. That's my specialty number. But I'm changing the orders. You understand why? Follow Gordon, stop him somewhere along the road and tell him to get right back to his apartment. I'll phone in about an hour. I understand everything. That's good. Okay. Did you tell Red exactly what to do? Exactly. Thanks, Professor. Now, oh, business pretty good tonight, eh? It could be better. Oh, by the way, I lost 50 cents on that fight. Here you are, Taters. Well, there's no hurry for it, Chief. I don't really oh, need come it. Come on, come on, come on. Say, how much do I pay you? 50 bucks a week. Mm, 50 bucks a week. You used your head tonight. Raise it to 75. No, oh, now, Chief, you don't need to do that. Well, um, all right, forget it, Professor. Oh, you don't have to do that either. I don't mean <laughs> to. Make it a hundred. Next time, I'll bet you a buck. All right. <laughs> yeah, it makes me mad when I think of how easily we could make an extra half million with this setup you've got here. We? How? Oh. Oh, a few little adjustments here and there, like Mike suggested. Slot machines, policies, lotteries, numbers. I'm not interested in that kind of money, understand? Yes, I understand. Good. I'm glad you're smarter than Mike was. Well, I'm smart enough. Enough, I hope, to remember. If it wasn't for me, you'd be serving a life term in prison. I know all about that, too. And stay smart. Well, I think I'll go home. Don't study too hard. Can I drive you home, boss? No, thanks, Tater. But you shouldn't ought to be driving by yourself. It ain't safe. Well, there's no danger now that Mike's out of the way. What makes you think I was worried about Mike? Well, I was, uh, 
just assuming. Hello, is that you, Mike? Yes. Pachorin just left the office. Alone. Oh, fine. But don't miss. Yes, I've taken care of it as we arranged. The money and your railroad tickets are on the way over now. As soon as you fix things up, I uh, think you ought to disappear for a while. Oh, of course not. I won't forget you. No, no, not at all. Drop me a line once in a while and uh, keep in touch with me. Yes. All right, good luck. Fu Chen told me that Baturin lost heavily on the fight. He didn't seem to mind. He doesn't have to worry about money, does he, Doctor? Why speak of him? If I had my choice, there would be no Frank Baturin. Now, if you children would excuse me. Where are you going, Father? I should set off some firecrackers to celebrate our New Year's and to chase away the evil spirits. Chase a few for me, Doctor. There is also a matter of a small debt. I must take care of. Well, have you two become so modern, you've forgotten our ancient custom of always meeting the new year with a clean slate? Excuse me. for an ambulance. I've got to save this man, Bob. Of course, Mary. You'll do all you can, but you must But don't you see why? Do you remember what Father said at the fight? If I were a violent man, I'd... I'm afraid, Bob. Oh, he didn't mean that. He couldn't. But he left the store just before Baturin was shot. He said he had a debt to settle. He said he wanted to enter the new year with a clean slate. Don't you remember? You've got to save Baturin. Who's on emergency call? Dr. Hansen. Dr. Jones, will you let me take this case? Dr. Hansen's given me his permission. Why, Hansen ought to Dr. be able... Dr. Jones, please, you must... There's only one chance in a thousand to save this man. Well, give me that chance. All right, Mary. You know, if a turn pulls out of this, there are a lot of shoes I wouldn't want to be in. How is he? Still hanging on. They always said he was a tough guy. It's amazing he's still alive. He had to live. Do you know him personally? No. He was just another emergency. Oh, Dr. Ling, this is Mr. Paturin's business manager. How do you do? Uh, how do you do, Doctor? How is Mr. Baturin? He's still unconscious. But he'll recover? We're doing everything possible. I uh, wonder if I might see him. No, it'll be a long time before anyone can see him. Now, perhaps it's best that you keep everyone away from him for as long as you can. Have they any idea who shot him? No. Have you? No. Of course, a man in his position is bound to have some enemies. But to try to murder him, would, well, that's beyond me. The accident uh, occurred, I believe, in front of your father's store. Yes. Fortunate you happened to be there. Mr. Pichuan will be grateful to you. 
Thank you. Well, you take good care of him, won't you? We'll do everything in our power to pull him through. Thank you, Doctor. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you will. Oh, good morning, Professor. And uh, how's Mr. Baturin? Pat, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to run things here by myself for a long time. Oh, say, now that's too bad. But uh, I'll do the best I can. Good morning, Professor. Surprised to see me, eh? Now, what are you doing around here? Oh, nothing. Oh, I see here it'll be quite some time before the King of Chinatown will be coming around here again. If he ever returns. Yes, that's right, and uh, fortunately things are in very good shape for me to take over. They've already been taken over. I don't need any help. Neither do I. Why, you wouldn't last a week around here without me. No? Frank Baturin is the strongest man in this town. His political contacts and his employees have instructions to take orders from me. How long do you suppose you could last if you were to fight the forces that made Frank Baturin a power? Okay, Professor, you can count yourself in. As long as Baturin's out of the picture, I'm giving orders around here. And I don't need you. Would you prefer to go back east and finish out that life stretch? I don't know what you're talking about. I do. You escaped from the penitentiary on June 27th about seven years ago. You know, letting your hair grow and uh, wearing those eyeglasses doesn't fool me. No, it doesn't, eh? No. All right. We're partners. Those men from the district attorney's office are here again. They can't see him. Well, they won't believe me. They seem to think I'm trying to push them around or something. I'll talk to them. I'm sorry, no one can see Mr. Baturin. Now, Dr. Ling, be reasonable. The DA wants some action, and Mr. Baturin's the only one who can help us. But Mr. Baturin hasn't regained consciousness. Oh. As soon as there's any change, we'll let you know. Okay. Didn't I tell you nobody can see Mr. Baturin? Yes, ma'am. I meant it. Yes, ma'am. You can't stay here. Well, I'm not going to leave him here alone. We're doing everything possible for him. I know, but he'd feel a lot easier if he knew I was right here keeping my eyes on things. Here's the result of the blood grouping test, Dr. Lang. Thank you. Rep's blood doesn't match Mr. Baturin's. No wonder he never wins a bet. What's the matter? Is he worse? No, but he needs a transfusion. You mean you're going to put somebody else's blood in him? Look, if there's going to be any transfusion, I will volunteer. Volunteer? Shh. Why, he might even get stool pigeon blood in him. All right, then. Come along. We'll have your blood type. Feeling better? I... I've been asleep. Yes. Most of the time for the past week. And I'm still alive? Dr. Ling is a very stubborn person. She wouldn't let you die. Are you Dr. Ling? Thanks for saving my life. Maybe someday I can pay you back. You've already paid me back by living. Now you must just rest and be quiet. You're my prize patient. I can't afford to lose you now. Two, two, one. You don't. You know, these figures can be tripled. Mm, how well I know it. But Pachur and I was insisted that it was smarter to keep the game straight. Uh, he's cocker. Yes, I know that too. But he had a few, uh, oh, uh, shall we say, ethics. For instance, he never admitted anyone to his clubs unless they could afford to lose big money. 
the little money that counts if there's enough of it. Yes, I often try to point that out to him, too, but it was no use. Now, with a few changes here and there, we can raise our income to, oh, I should say, about uh, $200,000 a month. Somebody's sure to tell about Tjorn. <laughs> Mike, it'll be a long time before he can see anybody. There's one hitch. What's that? Will you start playing ball according to our rules? What about the rest of the gang? Will they take your word for it that Petrion ordered it? Well, they always have. By the time he's well enough to talk business... Won't matter, huh? Exactly. We'll have complete control. And when he does send for me, I'll only tell him the things we want him to know. Mr. Poo, we represent the Merchants Protective Association. We'd like to have you join up. But I have a small business. But you need protection. No. Well, we think you do. The membership fee is $500 a year. No, if I need protection, I shall go to the police. I wouldn't do that. You better think it over. I have thought it over. Okay. Su Kuang, then Mo Yen. Fu Chen disappeared, and no one has ever heard of him since. It's a serious situation. They should cooperate with the police. Fu Chen went to the police. He is no longer with us. We can't let them intimidate us. Potato, come in. I told you, you mustn't go in there. But I gotta see the chief. Everything's busted loose in Chinatown. Don't you realize how serious Mr. Peturin's condition is? But you said he was better. Of course he's better. But when the bullets pass very close to his heart, there is a lesion. The slightest excitement or shock of any kind would prove fatal. Lesions? Go on, take it off. He looks like an Airedale. Say, whose mustache is this? <laughs> Lay it on. You want me to look like a Mexican hairless? Take it off. Leave it on. Off. On. Wouldn't he look better without his mustache? Doctor, please. Well, he looks so much better this morning than I've ever seen him. He'll do, with or without. But I think it's that. I like it better on. Aha. Uh -huh. Thanks, Dr. Ling. <laughs> Dr. Ling, if I'm well enough to be shrouded around, don't you think I'm well enough to ask a few questions? That depends on the questions. Do they know who it was took a shot at me? No. Oh, oh, nobody knows. They're, they're going to try to find out from you. Dolly, please, you mustn't think about that now. There's only one thing you should be thinking about. That's getting well. All right. Uh, tell me, hasn't the professor been here? The professor? Yes, a scholarly-looking gentleman. Well, my business manager. Oh, yes. He telephones every day. Oh, I should see him. I'm sorry, but you can't see anyone for a while. Not even yourself. But I've been out of touch with things for three weeks. Which is more important, your business or your life? Well, there's some difference of opinion about that. Personally, personally, I prefer my life. Then you must have absolute rest and quiet. OK, Doc. Now you must rest a while. I'll go and order you a nice cup of tea. Mm, I'd rather have a steak. If you're good, you can have a piece of toast, too. Ooh, toast. <laughs> Be a good patient. I'll get the tea and toast myself. She's a swell girl. Yeah. We sure hate to see her go. Go? Go where? She's leaving the hospital tomorrow. What? Why, she can do that. What's she, what's she leaving for? She's finished her term. Oh. Going into private practice. Uh-uh. 
Well? She's going to China. China? Dr. Ling, am I well enough to be moved? Moved where? To my home. I'd be more comfortable there. And you'd be able to talk business there, wouldn't you? Oh, no. No business, I promise. I suppose we could move you. But you still need a lot of care and attention. I hear uh, you are leaving the hospital. Yes, I made Dolly tell me all about your Red Cross unit. I think it's swell. Dolly talks too much. Look, you will need a lot of money for that unit, and I've got plenty of it. Come to my home and take care of me. You mean stay there? Yes. Well, you can bring Dolly along. Well, you said yourself I'm your price patient. You wouldn't want anything to happen to me now, would you? No, no. I can't have anything happen to any of my patients. Well, then you'll do it. If I do, you let me be boss? I won't ask to see anyone, not even Taters, if you say so. I'll speak to my father. Hello, Bob. Hello, Mary. How are you, Father? We were not expecting you until tomorrow night. They're taking Mr. Baturin home tomorrow. Then your work is finished. Not yet. I'm going home with him. He wants me to stay there until he's completely well. He can get some other doctor. Apparently, he prefers me. He's willing to pay me $200 a day. Isn't that rather a large fee for just... Tiny... Money doesn't mean anything to him. This is our chance to raise money for our unit. Oh, I see. I'm sure there must be some other way of raising money. But not so quickly. But you know the kind of a man he is. A doctor can't always choose his patients. But it's our good luck that I could choose Mr. Baturin. And he's really very nice when you get to know him. Is he? Oh, Father, you're not going to be obstinate. It's a grand break for us. We need the money, but Turin doesn't. You know how I feel about this man? Yes, Father, I do. But $200 a day for a month or more means at least $6,000. <laughs> Isn't this better than the hospital? Much. Mm. You've a lovely place here. Yeah, it must have cost plenty. Oh, I can afford it. Rep says you practically own the town. <laughs> That's a slight exaggeration, but that... Who's Rep? Oh, yeah, I see. The boyfriend. That's what he thinks. <laughs> have you a boyfriend? Wouldn't it be tragic if I had it? Is it that young lawyer, Bubbly? Do you know Bob? Oh, only in a business way. Nice chap. Are you going to marry him? Perhaps, someday. But you don't love him. I certainly do. But you are not uh, in love with him. I certainly am. Oh, me thinks the lady does protest too much. <laughs> now, come on now. Come on. The truth. I don't trust people who quote Shakespeare so glibly. Oh. Come here, sit by me. I can tell what you're thinking when you're so far away. There, can you when I'm here? <laughs> you probably studied Shakespeare when you were a kid. I had to wait till I grew up and could afford to take time off to find out there even was such a guy. You see those shacks down there along the shore? I was born in a place like that. You'd be surprised what a climb it's been up to a hilltop like this. But you made it. Yeah, but you don't approve my methods, do you? How about a little backgammon? <laughs> OK, I'll settle for a game of backgammon. You know, Potatoes, you're a pretty loyal person. You haven't been away from Mr. Paturin since the night of the accident. Well, you see, I sort of figured that the guy that took those shots at the chief didn't like him. It wouldn't be any good for you and the doc to do all this good work and have the guy come back and finish him off. Who do you think shot him? Huh? I said, who do you think shot him? Oh. Well, it might have been one guy. No fool. I 
I suppose you know a lot of people don't approve of me. I think you're capable of having their approval, if you wanted it. Thank you. Your father doesn't like me, does he? Is there any reason why he shouldn't? Mary, you should have been a politician. But don't worry, your father has nothing to fear from me. Why should he fear you? Oh, a little difference of opinion on a business matter, but I think... <laughs> but I never discuss business with a woman. You're first. Yes. You know, Mary, I used to work like a dog. Honest, back-breaking work. Well, in 10 years, I saved $5,000. And then I decided I was a sucker. It would take me a lifetime to accumulate enough to give me security and happiness. And so I decided to get it the easy way. And did you find happiness? I'm not sure since I met you. And so I made a small fortune during the next six months. And it's been that way ever since. And now, you see, I'm sitting on top of the world. <laughs> you like to sit on top of the world, don't you? Oh, I didn't make that long climb just to be pushed down. <laughs> you know, I don't like it. Now that he's home, we should be getting some word from him. Now, why don't you stop worrying? The doctor's still on the job, isn't she? I just did what she up to. Living in his house, keeping everybody from seeing him, and you can't even get him on the phone. Well, what do you care as long as she keeps him out of circulation? Why should we give him a chance to surprise us? I don't suppose she could keep him out of circulation indefinitely. But, wait a minute. Maybe she can. Dr. Changling, I believe? Yes. My, you have a nice business here, haven't you, Doctor? Surely you are not interested in my humble business. Oh, but I am, you see. You're a very important man in this community. You may as well cross the bridge. I am on the other side ahead of you. You want me to join your association. Is that it? Well, of course, it's, uh, it's merely for your own protection, Doctor. And not for the effect on my friends? Suppose I do not wish to join. Dr. Ling, I understand your daughter is the doctor in charge of Mr. Batchewan. Yes. And from what I hear, she's very capable and uh, most conscientious. Oh, do you mind if I smoke? Oh, sorry. Maybe you do, too. No? Now, Dr. Ling, if your charming daughter were not quite so, uh... Conscientious? Exactly. Dr. Ling, you're a smart man. Smart enough to know that Chinatown might not mind very much if its so-called king were to remain out of circulation for an indefinite period. Whatever my personal feelings or my daughter's might be, she is first and foremost a doctor, and as such is loyal to the oath of her profession. Naturally. Good day. Undoubtedly she would miss you should you ever happen to take a, shall we say, a long journey? And if it were necessary, you could identify him? I'm sure that I could. You realize what this will mean? What about Mary? Are you willing to jeopardize her safety? I shall insist that my daughter leave Mr. Baturin's home at once. No, please, Dr. Ling, don't do that. I wouldn't tip off our hand that way. Not for a few days, anyway. You don't want Mary involved with the police. We'll see to it that Dr. Mary Ling is not involved. For the moment, the professor seems to be running things. But actually, he's only a front for Baturin. And Baturin's the man we're after. Do you think you can get a conviction on the professor? You've given me enough for that. But first, I'm going to give him a chance to talk. And I'm sure he'll talk Mr. Patorin right into the grand jury room. Chang Ling has just been down to DA's office. What? What happened? We've been following just like you told us. First, he went to his lawyer's office. Then the two of them tailed it over to the city hall. He was with the DA almost an hour. I thought you were pals with the Lings. Get out. After all, it's only his word against mine. Yeah. And when they start digging into your past to find out how good your word is, the little be off the whole works. Looks like I'll have to do all the thinking around here. All you have to do is keep quiet. I'll take care of the links. And wind up in jail on account of your dumb tricks? No. You know, I'm beginning to think that maybe Bichon was right about you, Gordon. Yes. 
You always were too big for your job. Charming custom, afternoon tea. Oh, but then your people have so many charming customs. We only thought of the idea. It took the English to publicize it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, speaking of publicity, Doctor, do you think I could see, see a, a newspaper, newspaper today? today? No, I'm afraid not. And you mustn't always ask... I know, I know. I mustn't see anyone or use the telephone. I know. Yes, Heath? Uh, Dr. Ling is wanted on the phone. Ah, you see? She can use it. <laughs> I'll be right back. Quick, before she gets back. What? Sometime today, I want to telephone the professor. Nothing doing. You know about her orders. I know, I know, but I've got to talk to him. Oh, gee, boss, I promised her I ain't gonna let you talk no business to nobody. Yes, I know, you see, but you see... That Miss Dolly has skinned me alive. Well, can you at least go down to the Silver Club for me? Well, maybe I could do that. That's good. But you gotta promise you won't tell her. Oh, don't worry. Look, check up with the professor and give him this message. What I said about that herb doctor, Chang Ling, still goes. He's not to be molested. Understand? You mean, uh, lay off Chang Ling? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay. No, yeah. This way. You can use my car. I think possibly you can see him in a day or two. What? In a day or two? Well, uh, oh yes, yes, well that, that's fine, Dr. Ling. Oh yes, yes, of course, I'll phone you. All right, thank you, Dr. Ling, goodbye. He's okay? Well, I told you that. So what do we do now? Let me see. Perhaps I'll call on the children and suggest that they go away for a long rest cure. Why oh, stole around? Or uh, perhaps we'll just sit tight and wait for him to drop in on us. Yeah. And when he does, give him a real nice welcome. Let's go. Tell the boss. Here, where do you think you're going? I gotta see the chief, quick. Not the way you're steamed up, you don't. But I gotta, it's Mike, he's still alive. That must be very gratifying for Mike. Now, who's Mike? Mike Gordon, he's the guy who tried to muscle in on... Oh, all I gotta say is that the chief knew he was still living, he'd hit the ceiling. That's all he needs, to hit the ceiling. Do you want to kill him? Well, you don't understand. Mike Gordon's the guy who took the shot at him. I got... Say that again. What? Did you say that this Mike Gordon's the man who shot Mr. Baturin? That's right. How do you know this? Because the chief had him put on the... Sp oh, you won't tell him I told you that. Oh, he'd kill me. He'd better not while I'm around. Look, Taters. It'll only be a few days when Mr. Baturin will be back at the office. Then you can tell him anything you want. But right now, forget it, will you? Well, you're the boss. And you're the nicest man I know. I knew you'd want to see me, Professor. How do you do, Philip? How's Baturin? I'm sure that uh, you're too much on the job not to know exactly the state of Baturin's health. Have a cigar? Thanks, I don't care if I do. It's unfortunate that he fell into the hands of such a capable doctor. He'd hardly agree with you on that. But perhaps you might. If Baturin had died the night he was shot, you'd have been the logical man to take things over, wouldn't you? Now, I do hope as his manager that I have satisfactorily taken care of his business while he's been unable to do so himself? Nevertheless, it would have been to your advantage if he'd kicked off, wouldn't it? What do you mean? Just where were you the night Baturin was shot? Why, uh, I was right here. And there are any number of people who can tell you that. Yes, of course. We've checked on your whereabouts, and naturally you have a perfect alibi. Still, it would have been to your advantage. Now, of course, you've, uh, you've also checked up on the whereabouts of Mike Gordon. No, don't try to pull anything, Gordon. You better come along quietly. All right, let's go. Hello, Jeff. Oh, hello. You two were with Mike Gordon the night Baturin was shot, weren't you? Who says so? Where did he go when he left you? Oh, I'd celebrate the New Year's. With a gun? No, fireworks. You can tell that to the district attorney. Come on, Larry. Going any place in particular? Who wants to know? 
The district attorney. I'd like to have a little chat with you boys. And Mike Gordon has confessed. He's given us a whole setup. We're all ready to clean up the entire outfit. Including Baturin? Including Baturin. We'll arrest him tonight. Wait a minute, Mary. Let me look at you. Very beautiful. You look happy. I am. I'm celebrating. My recovery? Yes, that's it. You're much too healthy not to be working. Oh. <laughs> well, if you had said that a month ago, you could not help me back, Mary. But now... You know, this is the first vacation I've ever had. I was pretty sore in the beginning when it kept me from seeing anybody or even thinking about business. You thought it couldn't go on without you. Yes. But I guess it has. I'm sure it has. You have an efficient manager. Yes, the professor. He knows what I want. Yes, I know. I suppose as soon as you leave here, you'll be off for China. I hope so. I wish you wouldn't go. Don't go, Mary. Give up the Red Cross unit? Oh, no. Send someone else. I'll give you all the money you need. You're very generous. You can help people right here in your own country. Look what you've done for me. I had to pull you through. Oh, any good doctor could have done the same. Maybe cured my body. But you've helped me in other ways. Mary, I'll make you tops in your profession. I'll build a clinic for you. I'm sorry. Well, I see I can't change your mind. You remember that $5,000 I told you I had saved? Take it. Use it in your work. Well, don't hesitate to take it. It's honest money. I held on to it for, uh, well, sentimental reasons. Thank you. I'll be glad to use it. I won't be long. Wait here. Tell me, Mary, do you think it's possible for a man to do a complete about face? I think it might be possible. If you really wanted to. What if I said uh, I did? You'd have to change conditions in Chinatown. Oh, it's easy. Didn't I give orders that your father was not to be annoyed? What about the others? The others? Well, I can give more orders if you insist. If you really want to make an about face, I wouldn't have to insist. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. Yes? Uh, there's a gentleman to see you, doctor. To see me? Yes. He said he was your father. My father? Will you excuse me? Hello, father. Did you get my message? Message? No. Then what brings you all the I way? I came out here to take you home with me. Now? Yes, now. What's happened? I, I'd rather you left this house. Father, would you have a little talk with Mr. Batur? I have nothing to say to him. Let him talk. You just listen. Never mind, Heath. I'll answer it. Hello. Hello, boss. This is Joe. Taylor's at the Silver Club. He told me to call you up. What's the matter, Joe? What's up? Jim, Mike Gordon's not dead. Why didn't I know about it? The cops just picked up Mike and he's shooting off his mouth plenty. The professor gave orders to get Dr. Chang Ling. What? Now, what are you trying... No, wait a minute. And the professor's on his way up to get you. You gotta watch your step, boss. Thank you, Joe. I wouldn't bother about that. Get away from that desk. You're out of your mind. You don't know what you're doing. Whatever I'm doing, you're in it right with me. Put the gun down. Now, don't be a fool. Stay where you are. Stay where you are, I'm going to shoot. Put that gun down. Stay where you are. Stay. <laughs> Professor? Oh, hello, Phillips. Uh, if you're looking for Baturin, he, he's right in there. That's fine, but we wouldn't think of leaving you out of this. Mike and some of the other boys are getting pretty lonesome down there in the jail waiting for you. Uh, let me... 
me tell you. Please. Too bad, Phillips. You're a little late. It seems the professor was even more efficient than I thought. You should have let Taters tell me, Mary. Don't talk anymore now. I'm sorry I couldn't have that little talk with your father, Mary. I know. But you tell him everything will be all right now in Chinatown. Mary. Yes? Will you do something for me? I want you to buy the finest equipment and ambulances you can get. Hurry. Hurry, they need you there. I'll be with you. Hurry. Hurry.